Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dear Baddies, Boyfriends, Bitches, Dating, and Everything in Between. We've got a super special guest with us. His name is Kian La- Loggy. Loggy? <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us. We're super excited to have you. Um, if you could, Kian, if you want to just give us like a little background on you and, and why we should talk to you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I am a former NFL athlete. I had the opportunity to play football at the highest level. I ended up having a neck injury to where I could never play again. After that, I wanted nothing to do with my college degree, which was a finance major. Instead, I dove headfirst into personal training. I moved out from where I'm from, a uh, state, small state called South Dakota, moved to Miami, and uh, started at Equinox and established quite a uh, the presence there and eventually created a program for people with autoimmune conditions and digestive disorders that I scaled online, quit at Equinox, moved to Colombia and uh, dated I had a, having a girlfriend from Colombia. And then from there, I met a lot of entrepreneurs that were dealing with mental, emotional instability that I could help them with. And that it was about three and a half years ago. So uh, from then on, I've worked with different types of people. I've worked with tons of different types of high performing women high-performing men on helping them work through whatever they're dealing with. And also in the meantime, traveled the world and dated all over the world. So I have quite a, a perspective in that. And I'm looking forward to dive deeper into some of that today. Thank you so much. So you just mentioned dating all over the world. Um, what's your favorite country to date in? Brazil. <laughs> Why is that? For sure. Brazil. Uh, there, God, there's just this, this this openness and this warmth to the culture and the people there. Uh, there's not a lot of games. People are really just like open in regard to their interests. And uh, it's just such a warm, inviting culture. Uh, I first moved to Brazil after a breakup back in the uh, end of 2020. And it was incredibly healing for me to get back into the dating world there because it was so light and so fun and so playful. It wasn't very heavy. It wasn't like, how do we figure out what the future is? We're just here right now enjoying it. And I suppose it depends on what you're really looking for at the time. I think at the time, that's what I was desiring. But as far as the, the lightness, the, where there's a, uh, it's fun, it's playful, uh, it's passionate. And I really, really enjoy it for that reason. But long your partner is different. Yeah. I know you said you lived in Colombia. So how was dating in Colombia? Just curious. Dating in Colombia. You know, I, I actually met my girlfriend like three weeks into being there. I moved there November of 2018. I met her like the beginning of December uh, of that year. So I didn't date a whole lot besides her in the beginning. And then towards the end of it, I dated quite a bit. But uh, the culture is very, uh, it's very passionate. Right. It's a lot of passion that can come with a lot of love, but also a little bit of wild crazy, too, uh, <laughs> which tends to happen when you get that that mix of passion, uh, but also very uh, feminine in, in the essence of, of the women. They're very uh, they have more of a, a, a submissive essence to them where they seem to trust that the man can do a good job in that dynamic. Um and it's much more, it's similar to Brazil in that it's, it can be more light and not as how, how do we fight for the, the masculine role in this dynamic? I know Cindy, um, she just got back from um, Iceland. So I know you were interested, Cindy, in, in dating outside of the United States. And I am a huge 90 Day Fiance fan and just see you know, the drama <laughs> with that bullshit. And I'm so intrigued. Like, it's so full of drama. I love it. But, like, I can't imagine, like, having to date someone overseas and then bring them back with the, the fiance visa. But, Cindy, going back to you, like, you met someone in Iceland, right? Or how did that go? How did that come about? So, it actually, so I'm back on dating apps again. I'm still in dating apps. And, I met this guy and he's from the United States and I'm like, okay, so where, where are you in Iceland? And he's like, well, he's, he started with the accent and all that. He started acting really silly. And, um, he's like, look, I'm in Michigan. I'm like, what the heck are you doing in Iceland? Why the heck are you putting yourself in Iceland? 
He just so changed then, his location, I guess. Yes, he did. And then he's like, I'm done with the American culture. The American dating is annoying. And I'm like, wow. And then he was not the only one. There was another guy. He's in Kuwait. And I'm like, dude, you're not even in Kuwait. And you're basically putting yourself in Iceland. He's like, I'm annoyed with the American dating. And then I was like, you know what? Let me talk to you. And I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher your name. Kay? Yeah. Kian. Kian. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm like, Kian just had posted like about like the masculine side on the podcast. And I'm like, okay, I need to talk to him. That's when I reached out to him. So it's all about like, wow, I cannot believe that men are actually looking for women outside the United States because they are tired of the American dating. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we, we live in a demasculinizing culture where the men are becoming more feminine in their essence and the women are becoming a little more masculine in their essence. And it's throwing off the polarity dynamic. And I think instead of fixing the central issue, people are deciding to exit the game and go, go elsewhere. I'd love to dive deeper into it if you'd like to. Yes. Yes, please. Cause I like, it's very difficult. I mean, you know, like it's very difficult on these dating apps to, you know, to even hold a conversation with anyone, you know, let alone go on a date with them. So I'm, I'm super interested to hear your perspective on that. And I'm super, super curious because, yeah. oh, go ahead. So no, I'm, uh, I was going to say there's a couple <laughs> different routes we can go with that. Definitely. Because my thing is, okay, so as me, I talk a lot, by the way. Um, and I send a lot of videos and this is like, I've, I've had like conversations with multiple guys and they're like, mine is the best profile that they have seen. I'm, I talk a lot and they like that versus one or two words that women are sending. So why is that, that the feminine, like on this side of things, people are not replying, like women are complaining about, oh, he's not talking to me. I cannot find good men in dating apps. But then now you see that men are responding as, oh, I'm just receiving one or two words, but they're not actually having a conversation with me. So tell me about that. Let's dig deeper on that. Yeah, well, I mean, it makes perfect sense. I think when, when, like, when girls try to act like they have it all together, it really, it, it just throws things off. And I think the demonstration of trying to act like you do with being very controlling and mental in, your, in how you're responding instead of just allowing yourself to be free and flowy and a little uncalibrated, uh, it, it's really the opposite of what the masculine represents. And, and a man doesn't want to date another man. Right. So to bring out the masculine in a man, you have to allow yourself to step into more of an uncalibrated, uh, maybe uh, a, a more of an unconscious operating system that allows for him to feel more masculine. And not, contrary to what a lot of women believe, they think they have to act as confident or or be as confident as the man they're talking to. But that's actually foolish. And it's uh, it's a great way to, to turn a man into someone that's not attracted to you. But I'm curious to know why are women doing this? Why are they acting that way? Okay, yes, I mean, I can be a little bit controlling, but, or probably they're thinking about what they might say. In other words, I really don't give a shit. I'm like, if you like me, fine. If you don't, keep on scrolling, keep on just talking. Mm -hmm. I, so th that's what I'm talking about, right? I, I think that's great. I think it's incredible. What's your question in regard to that? I mean, it's just like, why? I mean, it's just like, I think people are just more like, more to like social media intel about like, oh, let me see what they're going to say about me. Or let me watch. Or let me not be authentic. And that's where people are failing because they're not letting their authenticity. And they're saying, oh, wait, I need to put a mask on so that he can like me. Or yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think for, for masculine men, there's a level of, which I, I would assume the majority of women want. Most women don't want feminine men that are showing up in the world now. They're like showing up excessively spiritual and can't hold a job and uh, are all over the place with their emotions, right? Not a lot of women really actually desire that. But for a man that's not that way and is very masculine, 
there's a certain level of love that I don't believe we're, we're capable of giving ourselves that we need to be able to feel from our partner. And when there's this space that's created with an absence of being calculated where you're just tuned into your heart and what you're feeling, that creates a safe space for a masculine man that's always in his head computing things and making sure things go the right way for the people that he loves and cares about and creating safety for everyone that he knows allows him to let his guard down. And when a woman is in an excessively masculine place for a masculine man, I don't think he feels safe to let go because she's not. And so that throws off the, the dynamic uh, a little bit. So I know it's probably something new, but I'd love to expand more on that if you'd like me to. So my thing with that is, are women not being cautious of men's like feelings or what they think or how they feel? And they're like, just putting it off. Like you're a man. Why don't you just put up with that? You know, but now men are becoming more sensitive on saying, Hey, this is how I feel. Let's, let's have a conversation to have a healthier relationship. Yeah. You know, I, and I don't, I, I don't believe we're in a relationship dynamic. We're inherent, like we're inherently equal in value, but as far as, who's expressing the most emotions, I don't believe it should be balanced. I believe it's the job of a man to be able to create the space for a woman to be incredibly emotionally un uh, unstable so she can find stability in that. Uh, but contrary to what the mainstream media is talking about with this like equal emotional expression with men and women towards each other, I think that throws off the, the polarity dynamic. And, and actually, I think for men, becoming more emotionally intelligent is not meant to make us more emotional so we can constantly be sharing how we feel, but to make us actually more emotionally stable so our emotions are no longer controlling us. So my idea surrounding a lot of the emotional work that, that is more popular now more than ever for men is not to make men more emotional. It's to make men more aligned with what they're really experiencing so they're capable of showing up in a more powerful way. And I'm not saying men can't say what they're feeling in a moment, when it's relevant to the situation and that that's up to him to exercise that discernment. But I don't believe that men and women equally sharing emotions is correct in the relationship dynamic. I would agree with that. I, and Cindy, I don't know about you, but like, I know that I can do everything on my own, but it is really nice to have a boyfriend at home that can take out the trash, do the man things. Like he and I had a, so my boyfriend and I, we've been together for about, I guess, 10 months now. And um, I told him in the beginning, I was like, this is how I am. Like, I don't, I don't need you. I want you. I want you in my life. I want you to be a big part of my life. He's my best friend. I love being around him. But I'm like, as much of a feminist as I feel like I am, I really want you to do <laughs> the man things. You know, like, I want you to do the trash. I want you to fix or mow the, lo the yard or, you know, fix the gutters, whatever. But um, I think you're right. I think it's when I was dating, like it was very hard to pick out the feminine ones that, you know, over the ones that actually have like true masculinity. Um, you just never know who you're going to meet up with. It's, it's frustrating for sure. Cause you think that you're going to go out with one type of person and they, sh and you show up and it's the complete opposite almost. Um, I can agree. Yeah. With you. you know, that's, that's, that's dating. I mean, right? I can like, let me just respond real quick. Like, like mm -hmm. that's dating isn't it like yeah and that's the the part about it is like anything that's really special in life whether that's doing your dream job or finding a, a best friend that you feel super stoked about or finding a long-term partner it comes with time and energy expended mm -hmm. so in the dating world I, I i can't tell you how many dates that i have i've been on and getting a little annoyed but continually staying in it and just keep going on more until there is that click. You can become more and more refined with what you want and desire. So when that thing does pop up, you'll know. Yeah. So yeah, it might be kind of annoying, but like, you know, it just sounds like the typical like, American thing of, Oh, why can't they have it right now? But it's just like, it's something really fucking important. Your, your life yeah. partner's like the biggest decision you'll ever make. <clears throat> it's right? kind so of a big of deal. Of course it's going to be, <laughs> it, it's kind of a big deal, right? So of course <laughs> it's going to be drawn out. Of course there's going to be time and energy and effort spent. Of course you're not going to get it right the first time. Uh, but that's that's the nature of the game. Yeah, it's all trial and error.
Like I look at it kind of like an interview, you know, like, like you go on these interviews and you learn a little bit more about what you like and what you don't like. And then finally with the person that you end up with, you have everything, hopefully everything that you want. I know with mine, like he, he and I, I feel like, like we complement each other. We're not like perfect, like a perfect match, but we're a perfect match, I guess, together. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I'm curious to know if you have a worst first date story. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll be, I'll, yeah, I'll be, I'll be no, wrapping kidding. around with you guys. Okay. <laughs> no pegging was done. Uh, but, Darn it. Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It was a hinge day. I was a hinge day with this girl and we went on this date and uh, we, we had a drink and then we decided to, we decided to, uh, we were having a great conversation. Things were flowing. We decided to go back to my place and she wanted to keep drinking. But for me, when I'm, when I'm getting to know somebody, I don't want to keep drinking. Like one drink is fine, but like, to me, it throws off the dynamic of me actually getting to know them and the place I'm in my life. It's like, I'm not just trying to have fun with every person I meet. Like, I want to make sure you're really worthy of, of having fun with in a sense. Right. I don't want to just jump into that. So I told her, I'm like, Hey, like, no, I uh, don't want to drink more. Right. Like if you, if you want to I want some water, like that's fine, but I don't, I don't think we should drink more. And she's like, are you telling me I can't have another drink of alcohol? I'm like, yeah, I kind of just want to get to know you more without the alcohol. She's like, what's well, really triggering to me. It's like my ex-boyfriend, he would never let me drink. And I was like, Oh no. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, I really just want to get to know you more. And that's why. And she's like, no, I just don't know why you can't just give me a glass. I'm like, all right, fine. You want to lead? I'll get you a glass. (laughs) And so I went and got her a glass. We went, we went and got, I'm like, all right, it's in your hands. That's fine. Whatever you do on this point on, you will be criticized for, but you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And, uh, so we, we ordered some food. I went out to get the food and then she had poured another glass by the time I came back and she had her pants off. And I, and I was like, <laughs> okay. And oh my God. <laughs> yeah. She, she's like, then she starts like talking cute and she's kind of slurring her words. I'm like, okay, now I'm just completely turned off. Cause it's not what I wanted out of the interaction. And, uh, from there she, I was like, Hey, I think it's time to, to, for you to go. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I think it is time for me to go. Like, act like it was kind of like her like decision for her to go, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so then I, I put her in the car. I started to drive her home. And then she's like, why did, why did you do that? And I was like, well, honestly, this is what happened. I just kind of like laid it down. And she started crying. And she's like, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm not ready to be dating yet. Uh, you know, I'm still working through stuff with, with uh, in regard to my ex-boyfriend. And uh Drove her home. We gave her a hug, and then obviously never talked to her again. But that was a pretty wild experience. Traumatic. <laughs> yeah. oh so I'm curious. Okay, so you said you've been single for two years, and in a few next few days, you're no longer single. So how long have you been dating or seeing your girl, your your future girlfriend? Like, how long did it take you? Be like. Oh, uh, one date. One date? Wow. Like, I feel like I'm so dialed in. Yeah, yeah. How yeah, did, I'm so dialed in. I've been on think... a ton of first dates. Okay, this, this is, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. So, okay, so one date, that's it? Yeah, yeah. Then I went on, it was like, it was like I, I could feel it before that date. It was really odd. But it was almost like everything that happened during that date was, like, any questions that I asked, I almost, like, assumed the answer, and it always was the answer that was best from what I, what I would want and desire. It was a feeling. My mom always talks about this, uh, Kian, it's going to be a feeling. You're just going to know. I'm like, mom, no, it's supposed to be the checklist. It's supposed to be the, (laughs) it's supposed to be this thing and that thing. I'm like, mom, it's more mental than that. You know, she's like, Kian, I know you, this is what's going to be. And, um, you know, after, you know, I've probably been on, I don't know, 40 to 50 dates, uh, first dates since, being single and um it was definitely that wow that's amazing but there definitely are some things that that i could that i could say that are more mental for what really like solidified it for me what are those (sighs) 
Well, I think there's a certain value set that I have that is really important for my partner to have. And one of them is, you know, because I have, I, I am, was looking for a long-term partner was if she's not stoked about saying she wants to be a mom, that's an automatic no. Automatic no. Like being a dad is one of the biggest things I'm like so excited about in my life. I'm not, not willing to rush it, but I can't wait to be a dad. And so that was one of the, the big ones. Cause like, you know, like some really career oriented women are like, you know, maybe, maybe in the future. And that's an absolute no. Uh, I want my wife to be stoked about being a mom and she can be doing her thing right now, but she wants to be a mom. She's excited about it. She talks about wanting to have a lot of kids. I want to have a lot of kids. So that's like, that's a, that's a big one. Um, also stance on, uh, and, and maybe I'll share my opinion. Maybe I won't, but stance on uh, COVID is actually really, really, actually a really big deal to me along with uh, being a vegan or not. <laughs> it's kind of important to me. And, and as well as where, where, where you lean on the political spectrum as well. It has some element because I, I can know a lot. I learned a lot about a person more from, from that, but those are, those are pretty big deals to me. Um, a, also for fair. me, I can move around. Okay. I said, yeah, those are right. Fair, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I especially can also, being... okay. Yeah. Vegan. I mean, yeah. that's very uh, important. For me, per... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not vegan. And you know, if anybody is like hardcore believing that veganism is like the way, the truth and the light, like that's just like, it's wrong. It's just not even true. I mean, so, if, they're, if they're a vegan, they'll tell I, I, could, I, I used to do this stuff. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, and that's what I'm saying. It comes with a certain <laughs> essence to it that I'm not attracted to. I'm from South Dakota. You know, we, we love our beef and we love our potatoes. So uh, I, I need someone that loves that too. Potatoes um, and meat. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, another big one is I can, I'm location independent. And so having someone that's also location independent is really important. I want to be traveling. Uh, this next year. And I want someone that can travel with me. So I think that's, that's really important. So she can, with her job, do that. Um, and also I, 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 I think I'm really well known in communities, but I'm not a big social media person. And so she's a, a big social media influencer. So I think we compliment a lot, each other a lot in what we both want in regard to being more in the public eye and putting ourselves out there so that also was like something that was really aligned uh, but really it's it's a lot of values like i i know people say not to really like grill people on dates with questions but when you know what you want it's like i know i can have fun with anybody like i know i can yeah. have I don't know, maybe not really good sex with everybody but i know for <laughs> me like having good sex isn't really that hard you know so because of that uh I like to more ask questions and, and figure things out so we don't have to go on a second date. Uh, but also she's really, you could tell there was this level of uh, innocence to her too, that there was like this, this, this childlike innocence where she, she was not super sexually active and she just maintained this like really cuteness. I'm not saying women that are, are super sexually active can't, but, uh, that there's this innocence to her that I just really like was drawn to as well. Um, she, she was really stern and like, she, she'd been on like four dates in the last two years. And I've been like, you know, like I said, 40, 50 or 60. She's like, I just, she's like, I just feel it. And I just know. And so she did, she didn't, uh, she was so, uh, she just knew, she just knew what she wanted. And that was pretty, pretty cool too, uh, to hear. So I can keep rambling, but no, you're fine. I, you I love, I love hearing stories like that. Like I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I know it's like two, you said what, two days away from, I guess it being like official. Like that's so, I love that feeling so much. It just, it makes, makes my heart happy. So and that is so, yeah. so, I'm so glad. important. It is. I, yeah, I didn't have the same experience with mine because I, I've been, I'm divorced and I've been burned in the past. So my boyfriend now, um, I thought when he came along, I was like, I right, fuck you. You're just another fuck boy. I don't think so. You're trying to get in my pants. Fuck off. So he, this motherfucker, he's good. He's really good. He tried <laughs> for about three months, like asking me to go on dates. 
um, just, he was very persistent, consistent. He did all the right things. And I'm like, no, never going to happen. Never going to happen. Finally, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll go with you to your Christmas party. Like, well, I'll, I'll allow it to be a date. And I shouldn't have been that bitchy about, <laughs> I shouldn't have been that bitchy, but I just needed to vet him to make sure that I wasn't going to end up with another fuck boy. And I wasn't going to have my heart broken, but there was always something about him. Like in those first three months that I was like, I can't let this one go. <laughs> you know, I, and I guess mm. if he had said, you know, fuck off, like I, I tried already. I'm not going to continue. I would have been heartbroken, but, but I didn't do that. Mm. He's wonderful. But so now we just that need persistence, to that persistence. Yeah. That's it. That, that persistence yep. with the guys is really powerful. You know, I, I, I met her on a, a dating app as well and, or I, not as well, but we met on a dating app and she, I, I tried a lot in the beginning and like she gave me yeah. a little bit and then completely ghosted me. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> then it wasn't until she, we go to the same gym and I didn't even know that's the craziest oh, no. part. So then she messaged me one day and she's like, Hey, do you go to the Equinox, uh, over in, in West Hollywood? And I'm like, yeah, how'd you know that? And so she she saw me. So that was like at the maybe like a credibility thing uh, or something that that really got her to open up and finally go on a date with me. So it, it, it that persistence as a man is a uh, is really powerful. It really is. Yeah, I know. We need to get Cindy on the uh, the <laughs> boyfriend bandwagon. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, so I, I so I've been I've been divorced. Um, I've been divorced twice and I've been, um, been single for almost over two years now. And it's just like, now I'm finally on like dating little by little, getting to know people and networking a lot. Um, there's this guy that I'm actually going to meet in Vegas, um, next week on Monday. So he's like, and, and what I like about this guy is funny because last year we started talking Okay, so I I add a lot of cute guys to my Facebook. Okay, so so <laughs> for business, let's put it this way. So, and he he also does a podcast, and I added him last year because of the podcast and all that. I I have a I have a different podcast as well, and he was in a relationship last year, but we talked about it was most strictly um, podcast and he told me a little bit about his situation ship. I'm like, okay, so what's going on happens to be, I am like something popped up on his Facebook. I'm like, Hey, how are you doing? He's like, are you single? That's why I, he's like, yeah, I'm single. Finally about time. <laughs> and um, so it happens to be that I told him, Hey, you know what? I'm going to be on your side of the world this time next week. He's like, what are you coming to Vegas for? Because I'm like, well, I have to go to this convention for work. And he's like, Oh, okay. And he's like, I'm with the same company too. I'm like, what you are? Cause he just got, he reactivated his, um, real estate license and like, awesome. So we're actually finally meeting. And he's like, what I actually liked about this guy. He's like, don't make any changes or anything. I will come to you. And I'm like, okay. I like that. Taking charge. I do like the taking charge. I have a question for you though. Um, for Kian. So, and this is, I feel like your answer is going to clear up a lot of bullshit that we hear. So I always liked it when guys would approach me and just say, you know, Hey, I want to take you on a date. You know, that tells me their intentions. Right. But if somebody just for our audience, like if somebody's saying, let's go hang out, that's not a date. Right. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah. And if a guy, <laughs> if, a, if like, here's a, here's, here's the thing. I was like, if you like the guy and you want to give him like another chance with it, something you can do is say, what does that mean? Cindy, like, Cindy did well, I guess a couple of weeks ago, there was a guy that asked her to hang out and um, she asked what she should wear. Like, is it a date? Or are we just hanging out? So I love that you did that, Cindy, because I feel like that kind of great. Yeah. yeah, puts a little puts a little pressure on his stupid little answer that he gives. Yeah, <laughs> it's you know, like it's boring. so vague. Yeah, it's it's stupid. It's just like indirect and vague, and it's not very committal, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I think the interesting part is, yeah, uh, becoming more precise 
as guys, and I don't think a lot of guys know that you're supposed to do that or you should do that is, is really powerful, you know? Um, yeah. I, for example, I, with, uh, this, this girl that I'm, I'm seeing, I, I, I'm already, I'm just doing all this weird cute shit that I haven't done in a long time. That's like, <laughs> I know all the stuff to do, but I haven't really want, like found a girl to want to do a lot of it with. So I've just been yeah. not wanting to, but I, I, she's got a pretty, you know, she's got a lot in her schedule. And uh, I told her to, to give me her, her email and I put a uh, date night in, in the calendar and didn't tell her the place, but I told her the time to be ready and what to wear in the notes of the calendar invite and just sent it over to her. You know, she, she, oh, oh, she loved it. You know, it's great. We both get in our calendars too, you know, and she, uh, she, she loves that. So I I like to do a little stuff like that. I, I, you know, she said something that she really liked about me is I open the door, like open their car door. Uh, I'll open the, the door to the restaurant. Like, I think that's really important stuff to do. And it definitely sets you, sets you apart as a, a man but you it, but you can do it in a non uh what, what do they call it um simp way <laughs> right like doing those things doing those yeah. things isn't inherently make you a simp it's it's your emotional instability and trying to over please in your essence you get something you can feel as girls so there's like this like franticness that you can feel from a guy that's that's simping um so i want to clear that up too it's like those those actions aren't inherently uh, simping, it's it's kind of the essence that that you hold, I believe. As I a love man. that stuff. I love like, I, the doors, me too. opening the doors, op- like pulling my chair out. Like it's it it doesn't seem like much, but it's it just makes you feel like they actually have a little bit of respect for you, you know. But but at the same time, it feels like they take care of you. You know, they're mm-hmm. like taking care and like that. I like that. My ex boyfriend didn't do that, but my ex husband he did, and he still does. Yeah. I mean, whenever I see him, he still opens the door. He still closes the door. He, I mean, but yeah. Did you know that you were capable of doing those cutesy little things or it wasn't until you met her and you were comfortable with her that you wanted to do those things? Oh, I've always been capable. I'm a, when I, <laughs> when I get into love, I'm like, really, I, I love to, to provide and take and take care of. It's like love is in, in my I would say in my essence, my family growing up is always saying, I love you, always giving hugs and always, my dad always doing cute little stuff. My mom, they're the happiest couple I've ever seen and continue to be. Uh, but for me, my biggest struggle was like creating really deep intimacy is something that's actually very easy for me. And I think that is difficult for many people, but for me, it's really easy. So what I found is I can get intimate quick and that can actually haze my judgment of is this someone I really want to be with or not? And that was, a, I think, a pattern that, that I had, not going all the way in and dating, but spending more time with certain women that I probably shouldn't have because I got a little too intimate too quick and that connection formed. So my biggest thing has been actually removing myself from doing a lot of those, those cutesy things so I can continue to maintain a, a, a clear perspective if this person's really someone I want to do that with. But when, when the walls come down and I'm like, okay, and I make the decision... It's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's full, full on for sure. Who do you think should pay on the first date? The guy for sure. But it, I always, it's, oh, we've had different answers for, for each, I think, because some, I've heard some guys say the man should always pay. And then I've heard other guys say, oh, well, it should be, you know, whoever asked the other person, in my opinion, um, I think that's stupid. The guy should pay, but out of respect, you know, like, of course I can pay for myself, but I think it's like a respect thing almost. I like to pay for myself. It's just like, it's it's just, it's just being a fucking, it's just being a man. Like, it's like, I don't like to feel not like a man. And I feel like a man when I'm providing. And I think what a lot of men don't realize is that they're, they're compromising feeling like a man for safety. And the, oh, well, you know, maybe I don't have to pay this 40 bucks for, for this meal. Uh, that'll save my wallet instead of compromise, instead of allowing themselves to be like, whoa, I feel like a man, like I'm fucking providing. That feels good. And that's where a lot of men are very disconnected from that. It's because they don't know how good it feels to actually provide and what that does for your essence and what that does to your drive, what that does for, uh, for your abundance. Uh, so I think that's the biggest thing is a lot of men are in a place of like safety 
and trying to just like not be in a, in a tough position. But I think real men actually like the responsibility and feel better as men in that position where they are providing in that way. So when would you start to like split the bill, I guess? Um, I wouldn't, but that, that, that also might be, I don't know other guys' financial positions. I, but then again, I don't, I don't know. It's all relative as well. Um, but I personally, in this place that I'm in, I wouldn't, if I'm out, out to eat with a girl, I always would pay. Now the, this, this girl, she's a little, little sneaky little girl. Um, I took her out and to, to get acais and then she snuck in front of me real quick because I, I paid for the first date. She like quickly threw it in the, in the thing and paid like, I wanted to do it. And I'm like, that's cute. You know, I have no problem with that. Like that, <laughs> that's a really cute gesture. That. Like, thank you. Right. Like, I think it's really cute, but I'm like, Hey, let this be known. If you want to ever pay, you're going to have to make sure you grab the bill before I do. Uh, but I'm pretty good with the hands. So I told her I'm always going to be the one that does that. But if you feel like you really want to take it before I do, you know, uh, so that that's how I look at it and go about it. I, I like to feel like the, the provider in that space. And I like when a girl is in her feminine and I'm not saying her paying takes her out of that, but uh, actually it, it might actually take her out of it a little bit, to be honest with you. I love when my boyfriend pays, but I know that like, it gets expensive for him. So and I was, I feel terrible, you know, um, if he pays for everything. But so now I kind of do the same thing. I kind of like sneak my card in there sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah see, that, to- that's amazing. That's why like as a girl, I, I, I would ne- if a girl's like, I pay on a date and she's in this place of like, Oh, I expected that. I won't talk to her again. Yeah. that's. You know, I think just, that's rude. Right. So, so there, mm-hmm. there's an element of respect that, that I give to a woman when she's like, Hey, do you want to split? And I think that's a good test for a man too, mm-hmm. right? For a girl to say that it's like, ask him that like, Oh, like, do you want, do you want to split? And if he says, Oh yeah, let's do it. Then you learn a little bit about it. You know, I'm not saying he's a know, terrib- like, terrible, terrible. Do you know What's the, up? just off the top of your head, like percentage wise, what percentage of girls would offer to, I guess, go Dutch or split the bill on the first date? In my experience, well, I don't really know. Like, know how much they've been testing compared to asking because they really genuinely want to ask. True. Right? I, I, I don't know the breakdown, but I would probably say 90% of my dates uh, have been good in that. Oh, that's I've been like, yeah, they, I, I don't, I don't know if I just don't really attract the, the other like ungrateful type. I think I'm a pretty <laughs> grateful person. So pr- I probably, it's a good position you know, to be in. <laughs> yeah. Like, but I would, I, well, now whether they actually want to pay or not, I, yeah. I don't know, but as far as at least offering, uh, well, the, the reason good, why good I, asked, majority. I asked a group of guys, I used to be on a bowling league a couple of years ago before COVID. Um, so it's mainly men is based out of like the company that I work for, but just a little one-off fun little thing. But there's, I guess, maybe a group of 10 guys. And I, I was curious to know, I asked them the same question and all of them, I don't know if it's because we live in the South or, or what, but all of them said that they've never had a girl offer to pay half on the first date. What? I thought that I was, I was really flabbergasted. Well, I, I also live in Los Angeles though, too. You know, True. like I also live in Los Angeles, which is very much like a, a very like independent yeah. woman, more of a, a, men are more feminine here, which also helps me a lot yeah. we've, we've because a lot of them are looking uh, for, for strong masculine men. We've got some feminine ones yeah, here so. for sure. <laughs> I, uh, I've always offered to Pam, uh, I mean, in any type of date, like it doesn't like, I'm just like, it, but keep in mind, I've been single and I'm a single full-time mom too, that I'm always used to like taking care of everything. I'm like, nope, don't worry about I'm it. The I'll same take way. Care of it. It's very hard. Like with my boyfriend now, it's very hard for me. Cause I'm a single mom too. I just have one though, luckily, <laughs> but like, it's, no, I'm saying Cindy, you're fucking, you're amazing for being able to do that alone with two. Um, but I got so used to doing things by myself but I think I gave off that, you know, I don't need you kind of persona. But so having my current boyfriend do things for me was very strange. Like I had to relinquish a lot of that, I guess, like control. So it, that, w- that was hard for sure. But now that he does do some things for me, like like I said earlier, like taking out the trash, I don't expect him to do it. But it's so nice that I don't have to anymore. I miss that. That's, I, that's I amazing. Honestly, and I'm glad, I'm glad you've been able to receive 
Like that that's can be a huge thing for a lot of independent women is mm-hmm. learning to feel safe receiving. Yeah. I think and you the right once he does person. offer and does say yes. Yeah. L- letting go and that being able to actually receive. Mm-hmm. I do. I, so just kind of, sorry, go ahead, Cindy. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to, I was going to kind of turn the conversation to, um, to sex. So, um, how long do you wait before you actually have sex? And part two of my question is, have you ever been a fuck boy? Um, I have to it depends ask. on the, it depends on the season. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the season, right? What like, do you mean? I would say the first, <laughs> what do you mean by what huh? depends on the season? Like summer, spring, fall. Do you have a hot girl summer too? No, like the season that I'm in. Oh, in my life. Oh. Okay. And like what I want and desire. <laughs> Got it. Right. <laughs> Got it. So moving back to the states, I was um, I was like, I want to date in America again, and I want to go all out and go on as many dates as I can and have a great time doing it. So I went all out and had a great time. And you know, I, I don't know if if you consider going on a lot of dates and having some really good intimate experiences with a few people at a time considered a fuck boy, but I think it's more so the the communication that determines a fuck boy or not. Uh, I would agree with that for sure. I'm in, in, in no, in no way telling any of these women I'm talking to or dating at the time that, Hey, you're the one for me. I love you. You're not talking to anybody else. Like you're, you're the only person that, that I'm uh, being intimate with, but I don't, I in no way I did that. I've always been completely honest in where I've been and where I've been at, which allows them to make the best decision for them. And some girls are like, okay, I, I, that's not what I want to be part of. And others are like, okay, I appreciate your honesty. I still want to see you because the value that I'm, that I'm receiving from you. And so uh, during that time, I, I, I was going all out with the dating and learning what I liked and what I didn't, and, and both sexually and emotionally. But I was always completely honest in where I was at and never lying to, to anyone in that. And actually still have some great friendships with, with some of those girls uh, now. Uh, they're just completely platonic. Yeah. So, so you were definitely not. I, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't say. No. No, mm-hmm. I don't. I don't need to. Be, like it, it, it's. It, that's the thing is like a lot of guys don't realize it. If you, honesty is such a uh, something so high on a woman's scale of yes. If she wants to be around a guy or not, and unfortunately, a lot of these guys they think they have to lie and manipulate to get what they want. But yep. actually, if you're if you're a badass enough dude, if you actually are a guy that provides a lot of value in a dynamic, more girls will be open to mm-hmm. you not being exclusive than they think it's it's crazy yep. but unfortunately a lot of guys aren't willing to put in the effort to become men of value to be in that position to be able to actually have that experience right so you get all these guys that are just pieces of sh- like lazy little emotional um, unsuccessful not pursuing anything for themselves guys that want this luxury but you're not providing any value you don't de- you don't deserve it right like yeah. As a man, you have to create your own value. So You're not inherently you, valuable. As, as I know a, man. a lot of a lot yeah. of our audience is is male. So, for I guess for those men that are listening to this, how do you how would you go about creating that value? Well, I think first thing I would say is now whether people like this or not, I would go watch a little Andrew Tate because I think he's got some good <laughs> stuff. For for men and, and, and his, his advice is his, I think it's his golden advice. I'm not going to claim this. He says, "Go get in the gym, and and work your ass off in the gym. Like become good there. You find and meet other epic dudes that can help you and push you and keep you accountable to what you want, and then pursue what you desire for yourself. Like that's that's one of the biggest things. You go work out. Your body should reflect the inside." You meet dope guys that keep you accountable to push yourself to be better and to go pursue what you want with yourself in your life. You don't have to be rich. Like a lot of girls say they want a guy with money. And yeah, I'm sure they do to some extent, but really what a, what a, a girl wants to feel is in the, be in the presence of a man that's pursuing what he really wants. So she can feel that, that masculine essence that he holds There's safety in that. There's not there's safety in the dollar amount. Sure. But there's actually safety in a, a guy pursuing what he really wants the highest level too. So, um, not to say you should be a bum and, and not make any money, but 
getting in the gym, <laughs> getting guys that are good friends to help keep you accountable and pursuing something that, that really like lights you up, I think are great starting points. I think you're right though. Like what you said about, we talk a lot about, you know, setting expectations and I, it's so important. I like, I can't stress that enough, like communication and setting that, that precedence and that expectation from the fucking beginning. Like that's the easiest way to avoid any kind of like crazy girl. And, and I say that in air quotes, um, cause I, I don't want to call anybody right. crazy, but you know, I, <laughs> I think that that's like the best way to just not have that bullshit follow you around, you know? I completely yeah, agree absolutely. with that. A hundred percent. Because I mean, it's just like, I mean, you know that people that are focused on themselves, on their body, on their goals and all that, they're not, they're focused on, they're not focused on drama. They're not focused on craziness and all that. And that's another way of avoiding all those things as well. It really is. Mm -hmm. Can I ask how old you are? 28. Okay. So when do you think you, I guess, realize that you wanted to, I guess, and maybe you haven't realized this yet, but how old do you think you were when you thought, okay, maybe I want to like settle down and find somebody and maybe think about having a family in the future? Since I was five. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since I was five, like I remember going to my mom, I've always been a really forward future thinking person. And I went to my mom and I, I told her, I was starting my honeymoon fund in the, at the age of five. Oh, <laughs> that's precious. But, so, I, so I said it. I said at the beginning, having a, a, a long-term partner and being a dad are uh, something that I've always highly prioritized. But I just needed to spend seasons of taking off some of the pressure of having to have that, where I was allowing myself just to freely date without expectation of needing to get into something too quick. And that was something I had to overcome. I, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from small town America where most people get married to their high school sweetheart and yeah, you sail off in the sunset, but that wasn't the life that I wanted, but my programming really desired that quickly. And so my, one of my biggest battles has been uh, not compromising because of that unconscious part of me that wants a partner and wants children. And that was, you know, for the last couple of years, it's something I really like honestly battled with. What was that by like not trying to, to make some, my brain would want to like make something be something different than, than it really was because it desired to have that. So separating myself from that, that desire that I have had that's so deep in me unconsciously has been a, a process I've gone through, but it's always been something that I've wanted and desired. I've actually had to, to pull back from it to really understand what I wanted more so I could see it when it showed up. Because like I said, this is a big fucking deal. And I really do want it to be something that is lasting. That is really beautiful because a lot of men don't think about, don't think like that anymore. I mean, and it's interesting. So I lived in Minot, North Dakota for 10 years. And I think there's a difference between like men in the Midwestern and men in the South, men in like Northeast, Northwest and all that, because that's the mentality that mint Western men think they see someone, they, they grow in a little town and all that. And they marry their high school sweetheart. And I have seen it a lot in Minot, North Dakota. Like I have friends that, you know, they married, they, they were dating from high school and now they have a family 12 years, 12 years later, they have a family. They, I mean, and they're still together. So now my question in all this is, you know, is it the way that we raise the way that we're exposed to more things that has like the certain mentality or is it because we're surrounded in a big, well, we're in Atlanta. I know you are in Los Angeles, but is it because the way they grow is they grow up is the way that they are thinking and they're more loyal to, to all those little, all those values and things in life as having a long-term relationship. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The upbringing is, is a huge part of what causes that to happen. And that's why I, I, I say with like so many women that they're like, we're all the good men. I'm like, go to the Midwest. <laughs> they're all over there. <laughs> so I'm going to start changing my, my location now. Okay. Let me get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> exactly. You, you know what, Cindy? You, yeah, we should do that with really you. Like, that. You should definitely <laughs> let's. I think we should do an experiment. Like, let's set your throw, location. Throw you into Austin, Texas. Yeah. Oklahoma City, you Kansas set your City. your location to the Midwest. Uh, see what happens. Yeah, we should. Put you okay. there. But oh, yeah. I, I, I so live there. The results. No. <laughs> I think oh, that'd gosh. be a great experiment. Because I know that but you, like, I know you, you live don't. live in Minot. Minot, North Dakota. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's I funny. Love you had the the old the, the long O accent. I love it. Yeah, I know. It's just like, uh, but I mean, it's I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's just like I lived in Minot, North Dakota. I, I I said I will not go back, but it seems like I don't know. Hey, you know, you don't what? Have I might to go back. Just you know, change your your location <laughs> on Bumble. All right, people. <laughs> for next up ep- for next episode, you guys are gonna see what happened if I went on a date or no. Because this guy that I, I told you about, the guy in Michigan, he he, we were we've been like um, sending videos back and forth, and he's like, "It's time for for us to meet. I'm gonna pay, I'm gonna buy your your plane ticket so you can come and see me." Well, that's very nice. <laughs> what does he want? I always feel like wh- if they're gonna buy my plane ticket, what are they gonna expect from me? I don't know. Maybe that's just my <laughs> my hurt brain. He wants a like he wants a long term relationship. That's a, fair, that's a fair statement. He wants a long term relationship. All right, so we're we're looking at okay Midwest. So we're gonna go to Kansas City, <laughs> South Dakota, <laughs> South Dakota, Minneapolis. Okay, Minneapolis. Minneapolis has a big airport, so I there like their go. airport. Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas is a great spot. There's a lot of like. Yeah, Austin, Texas, I think would be a good spot. Austin is great, yeah. It's Austin, a very eclectic group of people there. Oklahoma. Yeah. Oklahoma City. Okay. Yeah, Should I go back to good. Minot? <laughs> it Maybe Ohio? Hurt. No, not, not Minot. <laughs> Ohio. All right. Let me see there. I'll be like, okay, Ohio. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> That's Cleveland, Columbus, maybe Columbus. All right, let's go Columbus, Columbus. <laughs> I love it. I'm the dating social experiment. <laughs> <laughs> if I did it, I would get in trouble. <laughs> I'm not trying to get in trouble. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm single. I don't have anybody to tell. I'd be like, so, but um, it, it's interesting. So I don't know if you saw this post that I posted last night and a lot of men went off on me. Um, it's a post by Cher. I'll share it with you. It is, um, see, it is, it says men are a luxury, not a necessity. So I, I did see that you posted that and like, I, I know you, so I know where that came from, but I feel like that is almost objectifying men in a bad way, almost like you know, we don't want anyone to objectify us. Right. So I don't know. It, it kind of, it didn't come across to me the way that maybe it was intended. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Kian? Well, like to me, luxury implies like there's a level of detachment in that it's like an accessory. It's like he, he's an accessory, Mm -hmm. but I actually believe something that creates a really powerful bond between two people is actually a little bit of dependency. And I don't, I don't see anything inherently wrong with there being some element of attachment. I know people hear attachment they hear dependency and they're like, ah, no. Uh, but this whole, the new, new age wave of thinking of this completely detached, right? We, we don't need each other. We just, just kind of like want each other is, is like, it sounds like a, like a, a way to not actually go deeper into committing at, at a much deeper level with each other. And, you know, I think that's where longevity comes from in the dynamic of a relationship is some level of attachment and some level of needing each other. And I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with that. So when I hear the men are a luxury, I hear this, this element of detachment, which never allows you to actually fully submit to him in the way that I think is healthy for a long-term dynamic that creates a long-term desire from him to want to provide for you in the long run. 
uh, which ultimately doesn't give anybody what they want. So, like, you, the, if, if you if you want the long term attachment from him, there actually has to be a level of submission to him and actually uh, attachment in some some extent to him for her, for him to constantly want to feel like he wants to provide for you over a long run. Because if that doesn't exist, I think it'll fade. So the reason I posted that was like I saw it as you know what men are luxury, but you know, finding a good relationship is a luxury. You cannot find that anywhere. And I was going to put men and women, but I'm like, you know what? I'm too lazy to do this. I'm just going to post this. And it was like, it actually, I, I mean, I was, I was like surprised because a lot of men commented on that. And I was like, wow, because for me, it's just like finding a good man or a good woman is a luxury. I don't, I wasn't seeing it as a, Hey, you know what? It's, I'm just going to use you as an object. Look, if I really want to use a man as an object, I'd rather hire an escort. So. Right. It, well, it's like, it's not, I don't even think it's necessarily about that for the men. I think men inherently need to feel needed. So when you put something out there that goes against that very thing that men need to feel for them to feel like they want to provide, I think that's probably why they, they backlash. Because when a man doesn't feel needed, by a woman that shows she's hyper independent, uh, he's not going to have any desire to want to provide for. So even if you are a woman that is very independent, being able to step into even more like a kind of a, not a, like a, almost like a ditzy, um, hey, like, oh, I dropped that. Can you pick it up for me? <laughs> like that type of energy is what creates a desire for him to want to provide. So I, unfortunately, many women have this idea in their head that they think because they, this is what's happening at an unconscious level, because they desire to be with a man that's incredibly confident, that has his shit together, they think they actually have to do the same. And it's actually ass backwards. It's ass backwards. It throws off the, the attraction dynamic completely for a man when he feels like he has nowhere to fit into her equation for her to need him. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that from other men is the... I guess the, the way that they want to feel needed. I think we had, I can't remember who we had on the podcast a few weeks ago, but they said something, you know, he went to the grocery store and it was the smallest little compliment, but it just made his entire day brighter. I think he said something like, you know, you have beautiful eyes. Like, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like men are, I don't, I don't want to say simple, and have it, I guess, be a negative term. But I feel like the, it's the little things, I guess, that count more than we actually realize. It's a great way to put it. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. What's the sweetest yeah. thing that your almost two-day-away girlfriend has done for you so far? <laughs> Not try to run in the face of the – or play – try to manipulate the situation in the face of feeling all of the intense feelings that she's feeling. Okay. Like to me, I see that as so she's so secure in herself and what she's feeling that regardless of how strong the feelings are, she's not trying to play a manipulative game to try to protect herself. And I see that as so fucking courageous and it actually wants to make me provide even more for her when I see the vulnerability of, when we, because we've talked about this of, of the feelings that she's experiencing, the intense intensity of feelings she's experiencing as well, and to allow herself to still be uncalibrated, to still just do what she feels like she wants to do in regard to, to reaching out to me or talking to me. Uh, now she's cautious of it for sure. She said that she, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to be too much. I'm like, hey, I feel the same way. I don't want to be too much either. So we're, we're both feeling that together. But it's her her open heart that she's coming into it with, really like. I feel like it creates a safe space for me to open mine even more. And that's to me what I value the most uh, in this dynamic. Cause I, I don't know. I know how intense feelings can be and I know it can be easy to want to manipulate and try to control someone in that dynamic uh, to protect yourself, but she's not doing that. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> that is very amazing. And you're right. I mean, it's just like, Oh, okay, so I posted a video on TikTok. I'm I'm a little bit um I have a little bit of a following on TikTok, and it's just like it's amazing that a lot of men have said stop playing with the games. Uh, I can't remember what type of video that I posted or something like um 
like stop. People have to stop playing with games. Like it's not a game. It's like, look, if I want you, I want you. I'll go after you. Don't, I mean, do you really want me or not? Or be like, no, let's just break up or no, let's just not let you know what? No. So it's just like, for instance, the Bumble, the Bumble thing. So Bumble has, um, well, you've been on Bumble. So Bumble has um, the extend, right? A lot of matchmakers say, hey, you got to wait till they extend. If they extend, then that means they're really interested in you, right? If they don't extend, then don't talk to them. But then that's a, that is a game. Look, that you know what? Game. That is a game. Why are you, why are you playing that game? Why are we giving people that dynamic of less? saying like, hey, you know what, let's just go ahead and just play. No, you want it, just reply. Have a conversation. We're all adults. We know what we're doing. I'm yeah. definitely a proponent of going Agreed. after what I want, when I want it. Not not in a like, hey, look at me, like I'm going to be forceful about it. But if I want something or someone, I'm going to let them know in some way or form without being too brash. And, and, and today's day and age, I think that's courageous. I think that's courageous to be able to do that. And I like how you said not being too brash, right? Because there's one way of, it's hard to, to talk about that line. It's just something that. There is a um, line. <laughs> there, sure. But there, there is, is a line. There is. Yeah, there, there is. is. <laughs> Cindy. Right? Uh, there, there definitely is. Um, where it can be off-putting if too much. But it's like that sweet, that sweet balance between, between the two. Which, you know. There's also an element of coming to the understanding that you're the majority of people that you come across aren't going to be a match, mm -hmm. you know, like that was something that, that was really important for me to go into dating with was just this idea of majority of these people aren't going to be a match. So if I can just show up uh, as me, then, you know, it'll weed people out quicker. So, yeah, that was yeah. hard for me. Like after my divorce is, is realizing that, you know, and my grandmother used to say this a lot, but people come into your life for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And that's always mm -hmm. stuck with me. So it was when I started dating after my divorce, it was very hard for me to, to realize because I feel like I'm a hopeless romantic. And I, I you know, I want everyone, to, I want to see the good in everyone. But I had to realize that mm -hmm. not everyone is going to be the one, you know, and there's going to be some people that I end up friends with, and which I am, which is great. And then, you know, others that are just kind of going to fall to the wayside. Mm -hmm. I agree with that too. That's I mean, dating. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's just learning how to date, honestly. Like, I have to put a lot of effort, and it's just like, I have to, like, I don't mind talking to people, but it's just going on the date, finding the time to go on the date. Like, right now, I have all these freaking trips. So like, okay. I'm like, oh, like, this guy invited me. We've been talking for almost two weeks now, and we talk every day. And well, we text back and forth. And he's like, hey, you know what? Um, do you want to grab some dinner sometime? And I told him, look, you know what? I'll try to make it work this week. But when I come back, then we'll probably have, we can have dinner. It'll be easier for me. And, but it's just like, all right. So do I, do I FaceTime him? Do you FaceTime Sounds like people? you're being difficult. Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be on purpose. No, because he said, like, I told him, look, Wednesday, we I can know. do, we can do Wednesday. And he's like, well, I already have plans with my friend. I'm like, just go ahead and do that. And then we'll just, oh, okay. then we'll though. just go ahead and just, uh, okay. when I come back. But, do you yeah. FaceTime before you go on dates normally or a phone call even? Uh, uh, it depends on the season, but I want to, I want to, uh, real quick comment on, on what Cindy said. If you want to date, I think you make it a priority. And I think it's important to understand the season that you're in and that if you're really desiring long-term partnership, you shouldn't be prioritizing other things that don't allow you to maximize your ability to do that. I see she's got her thinking face on. <laughs> I am. I right? do. Like, I am. like if, if something's important to you, right, you, you make it a priority and you make other things not a priority, you know? And, and I have, I mean, like, for instance, like I told him, look, Wednesday, I can make it work. But if you're telling me, hey, you know what, you can't, then I, you know, there's 
Well, I, I'm I'm not necessarily referring to that specific situation. That, that's I, I I didn't know when I first made the comment that you brought up that Wednesday works, but I'm saying in general because you said you're going on all these trips. And I'm like, well, what are you what are you doing going on all these trips if if you desire to for long term partnership? I don't know. That's just my thought. Yeah, but I'm also making it work. You know, it's like either I I date. I mean, are you going to take me to Iceland? No, right? I am going to Iceland. Do you want to come? Come with me. But in in other case, but I mean, it's not bad. But I mean, it's just like it's work. But at the same time, I am making an effort to date too. So at least I go once a week on a date, unless they stand me up. That doesn't count. But yeah. Okay. You're ma- so you said I'm making it work. That tells making me time. it's like, hey, I'm doing right. I'm making time. Okay. Well, like making it. Well, your word choice is really interesting. There, you said making it work. To me, it would imply that there's a lot maybe on your plate and you're doing a lot of things and you're able to squeeze it in because you know it's a priority, which actually doesn't allow you to show up in the way that you probably need to because if you're squeezing it in, you're probably in a pretty hyperdrive masculine state. So a lot of it's more if you want as a woman to find long-term partnership, it's creating space in your schedule where you have the capacity to show up in your feminine state. But if you're making it work and you're squeezing it in, that tells me you're showing up in this overly um, moving too fast, too quick, not really in your body type of place that maybe prevents you from really getting out of the experience what you desire. So it's more about creating space for you to feel safe in your body, getting away from the chaos and the hecticness of always moving to be able to show up in your greatest form. Yeah, so what I did, what I did for the last one was, um, well, I got stood up on that one. I was like, Okay, I'm not going to plan anything like if I plan a time, then there's no I'm not going to put like a um, I would say, hey, you know what, up to this time. No, I, I'll be like, okay, what happens? What happens? Let's hang out. Let's see what uh, what we can do and all that. So I don't put like a time limit or anything, which is nice, too, because I'm like, okay, there's nothing I don't have to worry about. Ken, I think that's probably the best advice that we've heard. <laughs> in the in the previous seven episodes that we've recorded is what you just said. I think that that's pretty pretty profound, especially if women women were going to listen to this podcast and take anything from that. I think that would be you know the probably the best takeaway. So thank you for for your input on that. And I know that we're kind of like right at time. So yeah. thank you, Kian, for for joining our podcast. Can I say and, one more thing about that? Of course, of you course. Can. Yes. can I say one more thing about that? Yes. Yeah. That'd be okay. Uh, also, as a woman, showing up in your fullest form, being in your body and not feeling frantic, that actually allows you to then gain better discernment for if this guy is really actually someone that you desire to see again. Because if you're out of your body and in your head and in a frantic place, you're one, not going to be able to show up in the full capacity that you know you really need to. But two, your discernment for that guy actually gets hazy. And instead of checking in with your body and checking in with like how safe you feel in that dynamic, you make it about a head game instead because that's where you're stuck. So one of those powerful things that a woman can do in a space of really wanting to date is engage in things that allow her to be more in her body and slowing things down in her life as much as she possibly can. So it actually really benefits women much more as well being able to do that and them being able to have more better discernment in regard to mate selection. I think, that's super I think you're right. Mm-hmm. That I mean, I and you're right about that because I mean, it's just like, all right, like earlier, I, I, um, I was like super stressed, and but then again, I mean, when I'm in my little world, like on, let's say for instance, hiking, the things that I do like to do, then I'm more like, okay, I'm more me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, love that. I'm at, more of that. More yeah, of that. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Zindi, I think you have a lot to bring to the table. So, I mean, we're going to find you somebody. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to try. I'm going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, the changing the travel. No. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kian, be like, so but much. Don't, don't be too disappointed if you see, don't be disappointed if you see fish pictures or pictures with cars though. Because you might see more of that though too. Okay, you're from the okay, you're from the Midwestern. You're from the Midwestern. We want to ask you about the fish picture. What does it mean? Oh, I have my own theory on this, so I'm curious to know what yours is. 
it, it might not be actually deeper than what you, what you guys might be thinking. It might just be that it's a picture he's proud of and he's uh, feels like it, it's a good picture that he feels good about. So he posts it. It's part of his life. So he feels good about it. We have a theory not really that, thinking about the woman at all. Yeah. We have a theory <laughs> that the, uh, the bigger the fish, the smaller the dick. I don't know how true that is. <laughs> well, you can say the same thing with truck size too, right? This is, oh my God. Yes, we can. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, now that you talk about That'd the Midwestern. That would be an interesting theory. That would be an interesting theory. I don't know. It could be true. But, uh, take a poll. So, I mean, now that you talk about the Midwestern, I mean, have you seen, I mean, obviously you're from South Dakota, especially when it snows and all that. They have these giant like trucks, but they're like, Wow, they're probably like five four. I'm five four, and then be like, wow, th their tires are gigantic. I mean, yeah, they have to be. They're compensating. I mean, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't. There can be truth to it. The snow. <laughs> it's the snow. Well, I don't know. I think. I think with the fish, with the fish pictures, honestly, I think it's just like this. What I got you said. You said earlier, guys are actually like pretty simple, and I, I agreed with you when you said that. In that, he's probably just like. Oh, that's a great picture of me. I feel good about that picture. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to put that in. He's proud and of he's it. He's just not thinking it. He's just proud of it, right? He's just like, yeah, that, that, I felt good in that moment. I'm going to post that. Oh, I really like my truck. Yeah, I feel good about my truck. I'm going to put it on my profile. <laughs> <laughs> right? no. That's completely disregarding women and how they, how they work and function, but that's probably what's going on in his head. To be probably. They'll, probably. They'll, look at the, they'll look at the truck and be like, like, oh, she's going to like that. Oh, yeah, they're going to they're gonna <laughs> swipe right because they're going to like the truck. Oh, yeah. They know I can actually cut, get big fish, so then I'll, I'll, I'll post that one. And you're right. It's like a trophy for them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they want us to see they're like, oh, nice fish, nice catch. Yeah. Oh gosh, if you said that to a guy, he'd be like, "Oh my gosh, thank you." Yeah, it's right. It's awesome, isn't it? Uh, so, what lick you know? did you do? Okay, what hook? Let's oh, go more detail. Oh, he would die. If you, if you had, oh, he would die. Fall in love right there. Instant boner. <laughs> That's so funny. That's, you know what? That should be your next pickup line is nice catch. <laughs> you know, if you're on Bumble in the Midwest, yeah. nice catch. <laughs> what kind of bait do you You'll use? You'll be all of them in. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll, I'll swipe right on, on the next guy with a fish. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> That's well, dude. Kian, thank you so much for jumping on our podcast and giving us so much good advice. We are super appreciative. So hopefully we can talk to you again in the future, especially after someone, uh, Cindy, <laughs> dates in the Midwest. But um, yeah. But anyways, thank you again. And uh, dear baddies, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to uh, Cindy or myself or email us for um, any advice. So thank you guys so much. Have a great uh, evening. Thanks for having me. Have a nice day.